Today, I'm going to teach you how to reframe any 360 videos in Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve 16 to create 4K UHD video for YouTube or Facebook and Square or 9x16 social video for Instagram completely free. The 360 reframe techniques I'm going to show you will help you to achieve the same quality as you saw in GoPro Max or Insta 360 official commercials. I will teach you how to create cinematic motion blur and easy ease on your reframe videos to have the professional touch that you cannot achieve in just mobile app. Basically, it is like what you have already learned from my GoPro FX reframe series in Adobe Premiere, but this time free in DaVinci Resolve 16. This is an in-depth tutorial that will help you from zero to heroes in 360 reframe video editing. I will show you how to get the best video output from the most popular 360 cameras in 2020s. GoPro Max, CoolCam AK, and the Insta 360 One R. We will tackle technical problems like why your CoolCam AK.mov files cannot read by your computers, and why no stitch workflow from Insta 360 One R is a bad idea altogether. There is so much to cover in this video, so no silly jokes from your boy, and let's just dive right in. Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Clean Up. This is the first episode of my The Rinchy Resolve 16 360 video editing series. Everything I'm going to show you here is free, so not like my Adobe Premiere series. You have no excuse not to learn this and get better video results. So go download and install the free version of DaVinci Resolve 16 on Blackmagic website. First, we will talk about how to get the best video quality out from your CoolCam AK to get it ready for editing in DaVinci Resolve. If CoolCam AK is not your 360 camera, here is a time code for GoPro Max, and here is a time code for Insta 261 Art. Or you can skip the camera part completely to jump straight to DaVinci Resolve with this time code. Stitch CoolCam AK in ProRes. First, download and install CoolCam Studio if you have not already. Open it up, click edit, and drop in the video files from your camera to the studio. Move your playhead in the middle of the video and make sure the horizon line is level. If not, adjust the yard, pitch, and row to make it level. We are actually pretty level here. Also, I highly recommend to film in 10-bit color depth with your CoolCam AK to leverage the powerful color grading feature later on in DaVinci Resolve. Adjust the color correction on and off to check your stitch line depends on your sun location. In here, as you see, we should turn it off to have a more even blend of lights. Make sure you turn on stabilization and click Add to Q. Click the Render tab Make sure you do not choose MP4 H.264 or MP4 H.265. Because of your NLE, DaVinci Resort right here, will not be able to have smooth playback of a compressed codex. Also, you are losing your video quality, which is bad for reframing. Choose .mov ProRes and go ahead and hit render. The 10-bit ProRes file from CoolCam Studio can only be playback in DaVinci Resource or Adobe Premiere. But in Premiere, it takes forever to read the files. It is actually a Premiere problem. You can open it up in QuickTime Player if you are on Mac and resave it to solve this problem. If you are using DaVinci Resolve, you don't need to do anything. Okay, let's move on to GoPro Max. Stitch in GoPro Max in ProRes or Cineform. If you have GoPro Max, you should use either the GoPro Player on Mac or Max Explorer on PC to get the Stitch files. I already have an in-depth tutorial on that, so check here instead. Again, don't use H.264 or H.265 as an editing in the media format. If you crash your DaVinci Resolve, use ProRes on Mac and Cineform on PC. 
when the new GoPro player on PC is released, I will do a follow-up tutorial. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Stitch Insta gives you one art in progress. As you all know, Insta gives you one art has this thing called no stitch workflow. Literally, all reviewers tell you to use it. Bad, very bad suggestion. Your boy tell you don't. I know this is a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, but I just want to show you real quick in Adobe Premiere of the no stitch workflow compared to the stitch workflow. So you have an idea why that is a bad. Here we have a .insv file dropped directly into Premiere, it's stitch, but when you play back, look at my preview window. I have the top spec Intel CPU and Nvidia Titan RTX with 24 gigabyte of VRAM. And if I cannot play back smoothly, no one can. Look at the exact same files rendered from the Stitch workflow. It plays back smoothly, even with OBS is on. Let me show you the Stitch workflow. Open up Insta360 Studio. Drop in the same INSV file, and that is my uncle's doc. Check flow state stabilization here if you are doing 360 reframe. Check the log direction if you make reframe easier. But if you are cutting 360 videos, then don't check log direction to avoid making your viewer sick in VR headset. Choose normal or lens guard, depends on you use lens guard or not. I would not suggest to use lens guard if you want the best image quality. Same go with GoPro Max, just don't use the lens guard. Check dynamic stitching and chromatic aberration to remove purple fringes. Then you can click the export button right here. Open up the export dialog box. The most important setting, you guess it, is changed from a stock 264 to ProRes. Also, don't choose color plus here as we are going to color grade professionally in DaVinci Resolve. Reframe 360, a different way of thinking reframing in 360. So the current approach, either using the One Art mobile app with your phone or the GoPro FX Reframe plugin in Adobe Premiere, you are editing in keyframes in a linear timeline. You do need to have some animation background, understanding keyframing, and a fixed timeline approach. It is okay for me as I have a strong Adobe After Effects background, but for everybody else who is not an animator, this is not an effective approach. As a storyteller or a filmmaker, you should always focus on storytelling and how the reframing is going to help you to tell your story better. Instead of just another cool gimmicky tiny planet shot, the Reframe 360 plugin for DaVinci Resolve takes a different approach. You think in camera and camera angles. You first decide how many virtual cameras and camera's angles you are going to use. For example, camera one is a close-up camera, camera two is a media shot camera, camera three capture what the subject is looking at, which is the back camera, and camera four is a bird's eye view of the drone shot, and maybe camera five, six, and seven are effects camera, can do tiny planet, inverted tiny planet, and vertical zoom camera effects. Then based on your storyboard or the script, you want to open with a wide establishing shot, which is camera four. Then you want a close up to the subject, which is camera one. Then you want the camera two from a medium shot back to camera one for a close up, then end with one of the effect camera. Then cut to the next scene. You see here, now you think like a director instead of an animator. Download and install the free Reframe 360 plugin. You can do over capture and 360 reframe with DaVinci Resolve Fusion 16 directly without any plugin. But Fusion 16 is not in the free version of Resolve. We are going to deep dive into Fusion 16 and learn how to edit 8K or 11K 360 VR video. But in this tutorial, which is aimed for everyone, we will install this little free plugin to do the same thing as what Fusion 16 and GoPro FX Reframe can do, or even better. So go ahead and click the download link in the description below and big shout out to Stefan from Austria to develop this free plugin so we can use it and create awesome content. After you download the files, unzip it 
and put it into this folder in your PC, which is program file, common files, OFX, plugins, and just drop in the entire folder here. If you do not have the OFX folder, you need to create it and then create the plugins folder inside the OFS folder and drop in the files there. At the time of recording, the Mac version is not ready yet, but I will put the detailed instruction on Mac in the description below when I have it. DaVinci Resolve Basic Timeline. Now open up DaVinci Resolve, double click Untitled Project to create a new project in your database. Let's start by staying organized. So in the long run, you can find your media quicker and faster. As you see my folder structure, we have footage, audio, and graphics. Within audio, we have music, sound effects, and voiceover. In graphics, we have Photoshop for things like tripod patch and logo, and After Effects folder for CG render files. We will cover all of this in future tutorials. I want to slip into some professional editing advice bit by bit so you can learn and get better from each video you watch. I want to help you to get better. You can thank me by giving this video a thumb up. Now you will see how valuable this photo structure can help you. Just to show you, under footage, I organize footage by cameras, as different cameras have a different resolution and frame rate. A very common problem in 360 editing, which will create a nightmare later on. Make sure you're on your media tab, click audio, footage, and graphic folders, and drag it into master bin, like so. As you see, all the photo structure got brought in as bin structure inside Resolve, and we are off a good start. Go to Edit tab, and now another very important point. We need to design the timeline spec. If you are uploading on YouTube in 4K UHD, set it as 4K UHD. But if you are uploading on Instagram, then you should use 9x16 for IGTV or 1080x1080p for Instagram posts. Don't worry, we will cover all of that in this tutorial. Yes, I can easily sell this tutorial on Udemy or Skillshare for 1099, but I did not. Instead, giving you all the knowledge you need for free. So please give me a thumb up, comment below, and most importantly, share this video on your social media like Twitter, Facebook, or Reddit. Right click on the master bin level and choose timelines, create new timeline. Let's start by creating YouTube 1080p first. Click use custom setting, go to format, make sure the size is 1080p HD and the frame rate is 29.97 FPS, which match with GoPro Max. Here, mismatch resolution files. You have to set it to stretch frame to all corners. Why? Well, your final render file will be in 16x9, 9x16, 4x5, or 1x1. But your source to 60 files is gonna always be 2x1. And any other setting will not fill the full frame, which will leave a black hole like commonly see in some bad reframe video. This is the trick to fix that really quickly without guessing the scaling. If the scaling is off, you will see a stitch line. Just to show you real quick why this is so important, I create a timeline using the default setting. Drop in the Reframe 360 plugin. If you pan around, you see this black hole in the Nadir and Zenith, top and bottom of your video. Using stretch frame to all corners, fix that. Here, we have a GoPro Max drone shot on a racetrack. Under Open Effects, if you scroll down, you see our plugins. Drop it onto the timeline. Open up Inspector window right here. Go to Open Effects. The main camera parameters is like the master control. You don't use that until the end for global adjustment. Go down to Aux Camera Parameters. Let's create a close-up camera one. By moving the rectilinear projection to one, you basically remove all fisheye distortion like the curve adjustment in GoPro FX Reframe plugin in Premiere. Click Copy Camera to copy your current setting. Change the Edit Camera to 2. Also make sure you click Show Edit Camera to see the current camera you are working on. I move the yawn to the left, get more field of view and bring back the GoPro look. This camera placement is when the race car passed the finish line. I want to look there. Then for camera 3, 
I want to look at a different direction. So I change the yawn and pitch. Then camera 4 is my Y center shot. I can always hit the refresh icon to get the value back to zero. Pitch down a little bit as the actual camera is moving here as well. So it is a pretty complicated situation. But we are good here now. We have close up, medium shot, left and right shot. Even a Dutch angle if you want to by changing the roll. Well, kidding here, we don't really want Dutch angle. But we do want some effect shot. So camera 5, we're gonna create a tiny planet. We copy and paste in camera 4. Zoom the FOV all the way out. Crank up the tiny planet slider all the way to 1. Move the pitch and zoom back in the field of view until we do not see the drone anymore. By hovering your mouse on the numbers, you can have a very precise adjustment. By the way, have you noticed how smooth the adjustment is in DaVinci Resolve? Resolve 1 on your GPU. So it is a lot smoother than Premiere, which runs on CPU and GPU. Take a look at the exact same clip inside Premiere with GoPro FX Reframe. First, you notice my timeline is red, meaning it requires to render. Also, when you change numbers, it does not refresh the screen as smooth as Resolve. When playback, it is not real time. Even I have the Titan RTX as my GPU. So, this is the advantage on working inside DaVinci Resolve. It is a lot faster and more reactive. Okay, let's create one more camera, camera 6 for inverted tiny planet to see my drone. This plugin is also very easy to create the popular vertical dolly zoom effects by animating the rectilinear projection slider like what you see right here. We will use these effects in our next cool game AK example. Now we have all the camera. We are going to turn off show edit camera and we put different cameras into different time slot. Let's open our race car movie with a wide establishing shot, which is camera four. Hit the keyframe icon to insert the camera. To help you see the camera position in the timeline, we are going to hit the snake icon right here. Then. Click the drop down arrow right here, select show camera sequence. As you see here, you have camera run to camera 20 to choose from. Play the video, you see we have smooth real time playback. Right before the orange car passed the finish line, we want to look at the close up at that direction. That is camera 2. Type in 2 in camera sequence, real insert camera 2 right here. Then I want to immediately Quick pan the camera to camera 3 to see where the race car comes from. So type in camera 3 right here. Don't worry about the exact timing. The cool thing about this approach compared to GoPro FX Reframe is that we can adjust the timing later easily. Next we go to close up with camera 1. Next we will add a tiny planet camera 5 to give a bird's eye view of the racetrack. Play the video to get the feeling of the timing. Hit the keyframe again to keep the camera 5 for a bit. And then we are going to end with an inverted tiny planet shot. So insert camera 6 right here. So now let me intentionally turn off the blend acceleration. Play the video and you see the video move from camera to camera. But it is really robotic and unnatural. This is what usually looks like in the Insta 361 r app or GoPro FX Reframe plugin without adding keyframe ECEs on your animation. Again, if you are not an animator, you will have no idea what I just said. What is ECEs? What is keyframe velocity? What is the Bezier curve? Well, you don't need to worry about any of this. The plugin extract all the complicated concepts in Premiere or After Effects into a single Blend acceleration slider. You can just move this slider to find a more natural looking in your animation. As you see right here, right now, all the animation look really natural and have a professional ECE's approach now. I will go more in depth in my Fusion 16 tutorial about keyframe animation, which is part of this Resolve tutorial series. So if you are interested in learn more, don't forget to subscribe. So in here, it's a little too long to go to camera 5. Here is a cool part. You can adjust timing directly here by holding down shift on your keyboard and dry like so. 
you also see the live update on your preview window to find the exact timing, which is impossible in Premiere. Hold down Shift, lock your camera choice, and if you want to swap camera, move up and down will allow you audition different cameras. And you not always know which camera looks the best. Now, everything looks great, except the animation still look kind of not natural. Well, it is missing motion blur. The biggest reason why I suggest GoPro FX Reframe plugin instead of editing in your GoPro mobile app or the Insta 51 R mobile app and Final Cut Pro 10 solution is because they are all missing motion blur. If you scroll down here in motion blur, you can add shutter angle and samples to have a realistic motion blur. Let's have 0.5 shutter angles and 15 samples. Close down the gap between the cameras. We see now the animation looks a lot better and natural. If you part your playhead between keyframe, you see the blur. By reducing the samples, you see the blur look less real, but it will make your render much faster. So just for reference, the hyperlapse or time shift in the Insta with your one R mobile app motion blur is about eight samples. So it still look kind of bad. In DaVinci Resolve, you can control that and have, let's say 20 sample to have really cinematic look, which you cannot do in any mobile app. Look at that, it just look amazing. Lastly, if you want to make some global change, you can go up to the main camera and change it here. Very convenient. Reframe Cool Cam AK. So let's have a different example. Now we want to create an Instagram post with the Cool Cam AK 10 bit ProRes file we just rendered from the Cool Cam Studio. Right click on the timeline and create new timeline. Choose timeline resolution custom and make sure it is 1080p by 1080p and use stretch frame to all corners. Cool Cam AK is 30 frames per second, so make sure you set it here as well. Drop in the CoolCam ProRes file. Add the Reframe to see plugin. Click B to bring up Cut to. Cut from here, and we want to start the video from here. Hit A back to Selection tool and hit Delete to remove the beginning part. Set the first camera like so. Copy the camera. Create the second camera as a tracking camera of me. When I look at the other side, we want to create camera three to show what I'm looking at, which is a wide shot of the wall. Camera 4 will be another track camera shot to follow me up. And then the last camera will be a vertical dolly zoom effects camera. To do that, you bring the field of view all the way to the bottom, bring tiny planet and rectilinear projection all the way to the max, which is one. You see this perspective zoom effect. Now we assign cameras again using the camera selection parameters. Uncheck show edit camera. Go to the beginning to insert camera one, toggle open keyframe grab so we can see the camera, insert camera two right here, then I look up, then we pan the camera following my glaze. Insert camera three again to give viewers some time to check out the art, then we insert camera four to check me again. Then we end the shot with camera five like so. Hit B again to cut out the extra frames, Add some blend acceleration and motion blur like so. As you see, our CoolCam AK video played smoothly inside DaVinci Resolve. There is no long loading time like Premiere and no crashing even with motion blur and easy ease keyframe animation, which are very taxing on computers. So if you're experiencing crashing and infinite loading in Premiere with the CoolCam AK, well, I don't know what to tell ya. It is Premiere Codex problem. Either transcode it in Media Encoder into DNxHR 
or use DaVinci Resolve as I show you right here. So the biggest benefit shooting with CoolCam AK is the 10-bit color depth. You can finally kinda color grade with 360 footage without seeing bending immediately. This is not a color grading tutorial that is coming in the full dedicated in-depth tutorial. But let me show you a quick version so you get everything you need from start to finish your 260 reframe video. We right click on the video and select show scope. We only care about waveform and vector scope right here. We select a good part of the frame we want to target, bring down the shadow here until the bottom of a waveform is touching zero like so. Then we bring down the gain as the image is already blown out so we can recover some lost highlights. Coolcam AK footage is actually too contract to my taste, so I lift the gamma to make it less contract. Again, this is a personal taste as I like watch out look, which is really in right now on Instagram. Now, correct the white balance using the eyedropper tool right here. Click on the white part of the image. There you go. As you see, my Coolcam AK is actually guessing perfectly in white balance. The eyedropper tool is making things even worse as you can see here in the waveform monitor. So always check your waveform. Undo that, now let's increase the saturation right here. Take a look at before and after, very nice. This tutorial is getting out of hand long right now. So to trick a little, we are going to use a LUT I developed for 260 video instead of really color grading it. So go ahead, right click, add node, and add a serial node. Go to LUT under Photo Hue LUT. You'll find my orange and teal look LUT with skin tone protection. I also provide it absolutely free in the spirit of free in this tutorial. Yes, if you are still here, you just get a free Valentine's gift from your boy Hugh. The download link is in the description down below. Hey, don't forget to share and like this video. Double click to apply my LUT as you see, it is way too strong. Yes, your boy is extra, but it does not mean you have to be. Go to the key panel right here, dial down the key output gain, like 0.4 will be great. Subtle, but stylish. It definitely make your work stand out from other noobs. 360 camera like Coolcam AK or Insta 361R are very noisy, especially at night. Coolcam AK is actually required to go to denoising and resharpening using Tempora NR in Resolve, but all these are not free feature. You need the studio version to do that, so I will say that for the next tutorial. For Instagram posts, come on, you don't need to denoise and sharpen your footage. Go to Deliver tab, name your files, and choose an output location. For Instagram delivery, we use MP4, H.264 as a codex. Very important, open up advanced setting and make sure you check force debayer to highest quality. Then hit add to render queue and go ahead and start render. So for install Juicy One Art, the workflow is exactly the same as GoPro Max. As a matter of fact, this workflow will work on the brand new lab panel, pilot one right here, and install Juicy Pro 2 or even the Titan. Again, for resolution more than 4K, you will need the studio version, which is not free, but at least it is all you need to know to make great 360 reframe video. That does not suck. Oh, baby, a triple. For the pros, you can bring in your finished 360 videos, turn it into mono with Fusion 16, and follow the exact same workflow to generate a 2D promotional video for Instagram or Facebook. If you are still here, congratulations. You just become a better 260 editor and have the ability to create better content that help move our industry forward. This is just a teaser first episode of what you are going to learn in this epic series. We will teach you how to remove tripod, how to stabilize 260 footage, how to track and insert 3D text like what you saw in my Sao Paulo video, how to denoise, how to deflicker, and how to do 3D 360 and VR 180 
all within DaVinci Resolve and Fusion 16. I will even teach you how to integrate After Effects with Resolve and bring in some music goodies from After Effects to make your piece look like a bomber. Well, at least in visual quality, I can't help you to tell better story that is on you. But at least now you have the tool to do it right. This series will be free, absolutely free. No one sponsored me, but if you work for Black Magic, please hit me up. Let's work together to make your software better for 360 filmmakers. If you're a developer, the 360 Reflame plugin is open source. GitHub link is down below. It still needs some work to make it available to Mac users. So it will help the community if you step up and finish the plugin for Mac users. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss this epic series on DaVinci Resolve. Free with love. And I will see you next time in VR and for real, next one will be about VR, not just reframe videos. Ciao.